This is what peak isekai looks like. Skimichi Moonlit Fantasy. Should you watch? I'm sure you've already watched if you're already here, but Espiritu 2 Analysis got a video for us. So in this video, I want to talk about Moonlit Fantasy, as this is one of my favorite isekai series out there. And again, I don't have like a tier list where I go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, as far as like what's my like favorite. Hmm. We just recently caught up on Skimichi Moonlit Fantasy, and... I think watching Slime before this show gave me... Uh, the fact there are so much similarities because Slime took inspiration from Skimichi Mula Fantasy. For example, like, I don't know, Veldora and Tomoe are pretty much the same person, right? There's, there's, a, there's a lot of different similarities in, in, between the show because, again, Slime did take inspiration from Skimichi Mula Fantasy. That made me think that the show was, like, kind of the same, so it didn't really speak out to me until episode 10, 11, 12 and beyond. And at that point, I was just taken away. I have like a tier system where I got like my, my SST kind of like, these are my favorite isekais. And Moonlit Fantasy has always been one of those because I find the concept very interesting. And let me tell you about the concept. So apparently season one of Moonlit Fantasy was literally the prologue. It's like tutorial. That shit didn't matter. It did matter, but in the grand scheme of things, that's not the main story. In season two, right now, we just started, and apparently it's two cores, right? So technically, we don't even know. Like, we're not even into, like, the bulk of the story just yet. We're, like, just getting started. ...of a main protagonist that has kind of been, like, shunned by the goddess herself kind of system of being like, oh, you're ugly, I'm gonna throw you to the demons. Now you're, you're kind of like the anti-hero. Like, you're not the bad guy, but you're not also perceived as the good guy either. Sometimes I'm wondering, yeah, I'm like, are we the bad people? It's like, okay, we got sent here, but there's no mission to slay the demon lord because the goddess thought that we're so fucking ugly, right? So we're, so we're just chilling, but sometimes these villagers, uh, like, perceives us, like, the humans, like, when we get to the first, like, human gate, I mean, human village, they literally perceive Makoto as some kind of, like, demon king because he has so much sinister aura behind him that he had to lock away. And, 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 a diff and then we proceeded to just, like, level that entire village, right? And the more the show develops, the more I realize that the humans are pretty trash. They're all just beautiful people that are very superficial and in vain. Well, at least not all of them, but that's how the goddess kind of wants the humans to be like, right? So... Sometimes I'm thinking, are we the bad people? Are the humans the bad people? Bad is just relative. I think that their prejudice and the way that they look down on the demi-humans is pretty cruel, but Nakuto is basically forming like a nation, like a, like a sanctuary. Kind of like how Rimuru does with the Jura Tempest, right? Gathering all the monsters and making sure that the other humans kind of see us as mm, perhaps equals. Either you're kind of just making do with what you've got and a really messed up system and this goddess is kind of manipulating the board and kind of using him as a tool to do whatever she wants. And with second season coming out, which is going to be double cores, so 24 mm -hmm. or so Two episodes, cores, baby. Going to be 25 episodes, back-to-back -back episodes, so six months of Moonlit Fantasy. No split core? Let's go? I'm super excited about it. I really, really am excited to see... A lot of people are very upset about the introduction of these two new heroes and how they spent two episodes on investing that. Like, I don't understand why people are so upset about it. I thought this is one of the most fascinating episodes, but because people just want to see Makoto doing Makoto things, they can't appreciate spending a little detour on two other disciples of the goddess, which are crucial to the overall story. I felt like all, that, all those episodes did was enhance the story, make me more in immersed, create the world building, kind of show a different perspective of the different things happening before Makoto got summoned by the goddess. I thought it just made everything even better. But most people were just fucking crying in my videos saying, oh my god, Skimichi Moon Fantasy is over. I can't believe they're doing this. Like, shut the fuck up. See where the story goes, because I think the first season was phenomenal. The opening song is great. The ending song... Nothing can be season one opening. The song is great. The animations were great. The characters were great. The pacing was great. Like, everything about it to me was really good. Like, I, it's everything I would hope for as far as an isekai goes. And I know a lot of people don't... This is the thing about isekais is that you kind of it kind of gets treated like the junk food of the anime yeah it does because there's so much of it do you know why there's so much isekai though because it's a very compelling genre love people love it and it almost has like a starter template you know like you know it's like okay main character is virgin weeb neat otaku hikikomori just shut in you know all, all that shit bitchless fat ugly blah 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 gets hit by a truck gets, re gets reincarnated into a different world gets a new power slays so a demon lord or they can be summoned instead you know there's already like a set established meta and a template that you can just kind of work with to kind of get that shit started immediately without having to worry about like proper intro setup and stuff like that you know what i mean 
It's like a very simple template that you can just use to just like get an immediate start on the isek and on, on like the anime. And a lot of people because they love isekai, they can just just go with it, right? Sort of genres or themes and all that kind of stuff. And there's a lot of people out there that just hate isekais purely because of the concept itself. They would yeah. prefer it to be a fantasy. But I like how they've Nah, there's isekai and then there's native isekai okay it's not fantasy it's native isekai done this isekai kind of world and the second season even with two episodes out proves why i love it being an isekai itself because there are many isekais out there where i've just sat there and said it shouldn't be an isekai it should just be a power fantasy because there's many why not both why can't an isekai be a power fantasy situations where you get a main protagonist he gets transported to an alternative world it's a five minute introduction about his past life and that's Dude, that five minute introduction is so fucking important though. I, I swear to God, like the first like, and here's the thing about episode one of Isekai's. That episode one is probably one of the most important in terms of the plot and all the important shit that'll happen in the future, right? Cause like, I'll, I'll give you an example. Like in Skimmy Shimmy with Fantasy, like as soon as we're, we're summoned by the goddess, it's like, oh, we were from earth, but apparently there's an earth God, you know, the God that actually gave us the powers versus the goddess that didn't really give us the powers, right? So we don't even have the goddess's blessings. We're not even part of our leveling system because we have the God's power from earth, but people don't really think about that. They're like, well, who is this guy? Well, what the fuck? The goddess just sends us here? Oh, okay. And they're like, oh, by the way, also because you're from earth, suddenly your, your magic and your all that different shit has been lifted. So you're no longer lifted. You're no longer nerfed. You're just strong as fuck right now. You're like, wait, 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 what, what? Oh, oh, okay. There's like so much little details that they just kind of gloss over immediately intentionally in episode one because people are kind of caught off guard so that later they start introducing other themes out of stories like oh makoto your your level still one why isn't it going up and people are like i don't know why isn't it going up here's another example reincarnated as a slime where rimuru is literally spawned in a fucking cave but this cave is like the end game fucking territory of like you know where veldora is one of the most important like legendary like dragons are like sealed in right and even then there's like a brief story about how veldora was sealed by a hero which again then ties into one of the one of the students of shizu right because of all the different shit that they said and as well as like the name of rimuru casually being given to rimuru from veldora without explaining what does that name even mean right so there's little things that happen in episode one of the isekais that like goes beyond to the end game but you never think about it as a first time watcher because it's just like holy shit there's a lot of things just being thrown at me right now you never see anything about that ever again you never you never get an idea of what they what they were like in their past life have they changed how have they adapted it's all just like click of a finger it's over and done with you, they're just like it just feels like it's just there that first five minutes just so they can shove the isekai tag in the actual series so it's awkward it feels it feels annoying when they do that but with moonlit fantasy it doesn't and the reason being is because of the connection from his past his present and then also the future with all these other heroes being transported as well so there's multiple heroes and it seems mm -hmm. to be some of these do have connections between each other yeah makoto and her gathered, right all of them makoto and hibiki i think they know each other and the guy right tomiko or i'm never gonna say his name correctly fucking tomaki whatever his name is i think he was like an idol or like a model for a magazine i think all of them because there's two heroes that have been transported on top of him one female one male and each of those have their own unique powers and so there's so many interesting questions that I have about where that part of the story is going to go. And even mm. if I knew, I wouldn't want to spoil the second season because I feel like given an idea of what the first season is, with a little bit of season two, is all you need to know to know that it is a great series. If you haven't ever watched Moonlight Fantasy, I highly recommend it. The only issue I have with the series is there's no legal English translation of the light novel. Illegal English translation of light novels. Well, that's not an anime problem. That's a light novel problem. Currently, that might change but currently there is not. I hope there will be because it's a really good series and I would love absolutely- But I'm sure the pirates got some translations, right? I would love to read the light novels and go deeper into it and see what cut content there is, but also just get more deeper into the story because I, I of course gather a feeling that the anime is not gonna cover all the light novels with season two. So there's always gonna be- Do you guys read the light novel for Moon and Fantasy? Cause so far I haven't really gotten a complaint that the uh, East, like uh, Moon and Fantasy anime itself is like rushing or like skipping so much shit i haven't had that kind of complaint like i, I get in like classroom of the elite for example more 
after the anime and I'm just genuinely curious and I love doing light novel reviews when they do well and I enjoy them the fans enjoy them they get re watched that kind of thing like you know because like if there's like an audiobook maybe we could check it out I don't know because like we're, re we're listening to the classroom of the elite audiobook right now and I do enjoy when we have some spare time just to just kind of get more background information about the source material I make content so that people enjoy them so it always is a bummer if people don't watch them and enjoy them but I just think Moonlit Fantasy does a lot of things right, especially mm, with his such past as? life and how like he has memories of people that he was close to in his past life and how that has an impact on his behavior when he sees people mm. in this isekai world. I guess uh, Hasegawa is an example of that, right? The girl that he fucking crushed when she confessed to him after she fucking changes her entire hairstyle to having a little like a whatever little hairstyle right over here that apparently Makoto liked and he still dumped her. He didn't dump her. They never even started dating. His relationship with the goddess itself it's not like you just have the goddess there for five minutes to bestow a power and then it's over with i did like that the fact well we've already had a bit of the bitchy goddess gonna tropes before like konosuba is a direct example i can remember right now right but at least that was a little bit more comical you know the god aqua is a bitch but you know she's our bitch the goddess in this show i cannot say that she is a monster she's a heinous monster now I have a feeling she's super hot because she... Well, here's another interesting theory that I've been hearing around. is like, the goddess actually is not hot. And like, she loves things that's beautiful. And she is very insecure. That's why she'll never... They're, they're never don't spoil me in chat. But it makes sense how she is obsessed with beauty and wants the humans to be basically the embodiment of fucking superficial beauty and idiocracy. And they have no education and blah, blah, blah. But at the same time, it's like... What does she look like? Because they haven't shown us her eyes just yet. They're still hiding that. Now, her body, the rest of her physique looks amazing. But it would be very interesting. And I think it would make a lot of sense if she actually was ugly. Maybe even uglier than Makoto, which I don't think is even ugly, man. No, she's manipulating the whole system and everything. And it does kind of have like a map that looks like Japan as well. So Yeah, what's up with that? The map of this world is the same as Japan. That is so important. What does that imply? I'm not sure. Our parents are technically from this world and there are other, there are other worlds, right? I think the term was grants. Grants are um, humans. No, sorry. Grants are beings like uh, humans in, in the isekai world that were able to basically travel to Earth or other worlds like that, right? And the fact that the countries are the same like map. What does that mean? I don't know. There's some interesting like crossovers between the two. And then you've also got the other god himself that helped him Yes, and the actual god from Earth, the moon god or whatever, that gave us all the powers, like Kai and that kind of shit. That's not part of the goddess's system. That's why we're still level one. That's why we don't like apply to whatever power scaling that they have. We're on a totally different system. And then you've got his past life with his family, his past life with his friends and that girl that he had a crush with. Or well, not really a crush. I, I think he kind of had feelings, but she didn't. And there's like, all the manipulation. I, 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 yeah, I, I'm sketchy with my memory there. Just talking about it. But I think he's talking about Hasago and Hase how Hasago got dumped by him. There's just so much potential for the story just from that component alone. And I'm not even getting into the actual power fantasy itself. How he is so overpowered. How yeah. he has to wear equipment to drain the power because of his... That isn't crazy, huh? And usually most shows, you have to get gears to like boost your power more and more. In this show, we have to get gear to like nerf us because we're too fucking strong. Over the top, like mana kind of... And let me explain the mana part, right? Because I think a lot of people were um, theorizing and talking about it, and I do also agree. And it's like, yeah, we do know that Makoto loved doing archery back as an Earth too, right? But what I, the reason I couldn't really kind of make that connection is like, why would he ha already have mana back on Earth? The whole argument of how Makoto has such a deep pool of mana before even coming here was the fact it's a combination of him doing the continued, you know, focused training, which like, you know, basically makes his mana go away to almost like the point of suicide, just destroying oneself, just gone and then coming back and basically just stretching that basically just makes the mana pool grow bigger and bigger back on Earth already. But it's like, how would we already have mana on Earth? I just didn't really 
understand that part. But let's say that let's just say that you know mana already existed for him. He just didn't know that it existed. And he kept doing that, right? And then he gets transported to this other world. And remember what the god said. The god said that suddenly now because you're here, all your weights are lifted. You're no longer nerfed, right? You're stronger now. Everything should be stronger about you. So combination of those two things is why his mana pool is so fucking big that basically rivals the goddesses, right? Thing. The fact that he looks ugly, which I don't, I don't think he looks ugly at all. I think he looks totally fine, but obviously you cannot make him too ugly. I think he's a solid 7 out of 10 character. But if you made the main character of your anime too fucking ugly, it's hard to market them. It's hard to kind of sell merch. It's hard to make other people kind of watch it because obviously you want to make them look a little good, right? So it's like an interesting little, little what's the word? Uh, contradiction happening between them calling him ugly, but it's like it's not too ugly. I don't think it looks ugly, but apparently in that world he looks ugly, so people kind of shun him, and then because yeah. of the mana they get scared of him. And then he's made friends with all these monsters, dragon and the spider, and the spider having a bit. I talk about that a lot time too, Rio, about how his parents are super hot because they're they're obviously humans. And like, okay, so like, all right, let's say the parents had their kids. Let's say the parents had Makoto back on Isekai World, and Makoto looks identical. Would that fucking matter? Would he be perceived as hot because he's from here? But if he was fucking burnt on Earth with the same look, would he be perceived different? I don't really know. Bit of a relationship with some of these other heroes. Oh, the mana? I'm not sure. There's all these things going on. Uh, yeah, you could argue that like the Isekai parents, the grants, obviously they're the son of it, right? That's another component, right? Besides the archery and like transporting worlds to get the 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 weights lifted off of him, maybe his parents' genes because he's like a su they're like super important people. Yeah, it could, it could make sense too. On and yes, you can technically classify this as a Harem? I... Harem? I'm kidding. Um, do we have a harem? Yeah, yeah we do. Yes we do. We start with Emma, we, we get a pig, a dragon, and a spider, and much more after that. Yeah, yeah, it's a harem. It's really debatable, because... If you define harem as a main character in a show getting surrounded by a bunch of women that wants to fuck him, yes I do agree this is a harem. Now, obviously, there isn't that kind of, like, relationship between those characters, and Makoto doesn't thirst over them, right? So that's why maybe a spiritual analysis is kind of hesitating to say that this is harm or not. But, yes, if you define a harm as a main character of a show, I don't care how he feels about the other girls. If he gets surrounded by women, and all the women are just thirsty over him, I feel like that is indeed a harm. Technically, the definition of a harem is three or more girl... <laughs> Three or more, good to know. Three, not two, it's gotta be three or more. Uh, three or more individuals in love with the same person. Now, the person doesn't have to reciprocate the feelings. I have to gotcha, they don't have to reciprocate. Because I always get yelled at in the comments, people going, that's not how a harem works. No, that <laughs> no shot, he gets fucking hate comments saying, <clears throat> actually, it's a spiritual analysis. It's actually more than three people, and the feeling cannot be reciprocated. That is exactly how a harem works. It's three or more people okay. in love with the same person, and it yeah. does not have to be reciprocated. As Thank you for the, the definition of what a harem is. Long as those now there's going to be a bunch of people commenting on his videos saying, Actually, it's not called harem, it's harem. He's free or in love with the main protagonist. That is it. That's all that needs to happen. He doesn't have to marry them all. He has, doesn't have to date them all. He doesn't even have to like them. He could hate them all. And it would still be classified as a harem because... Is there a harem where the concept is that the main character hates the girls and shits on them? That would be an interesting... Interesting concept, right? I wonder if a show like that exists. They are in love with him. But you've got the dragon and the spider, so that's two. I'm never really sure with the pig girl if she kind of has feelings. I kind of Emma, well, she smells nice. Mm, I, I do like Emma. I mean, she is a pig, but she's so cute and wholesome. I feel like she does. So I'm kind of like, hmm. That mm. technically would make it a harem if she is one of those, but I've never really looked up. Now we're going to bestiality territory, okay? The tags to see if other places classified as a harem or not. Because I don't really care. I, I, I really don't care if it's classified as a harem or not. And that's another thing as well, is that harems do also get a bit of a stigma because, oh, how dare yeah. one person fall in love with the same person. Yeah, some people just... Like, people wouldn't watch 100 Girlfriends because it's a harem. Like, I don't know. I, I, I feel like some shows definitely do get a bad rep before it even starts. Like, they won't even give a chance to... Like, for example, people won't watch Isekai because it's an Isekai, you know? So, I feel like people that are kind of short-sighted, that just kind of stigmatize shows and genres based on these preconceived notions that they themselves haven't even proved. They don't even know. They just hear the bad things around them. They avoid it. I feel like you're missing out, man. You should give it a chance. Person, which, by the way, isn't really that... 
religious people get offended? There's plenty of religions where a harem exists, man. <laughs> there, there are plenty of religions where the dude just gets surrounded by so many women. It should be fine. Coming in real life. Like, there's, there's a reason why the term love triangle exists, exists and reason why there are so many dramas out there. How about a, lo how about a love polygon? You know, just, you know, interesting stories about people that have drama going on in their own life because, say, like, a female has, like, three four five guys that are how dare that female have three four five guys all interested in them and they're kind of fighting for that their affection that is technically a harem people say that's a ultimate game right that, that that's the reverse harem where basically if you think that a regular harem is from the perspective of a main male character i guess then you know that's an ultimate the reverse it's a reverse harem but i i don't remember the word harem ever being gender specific so again just want to point that out but you could call it a reverse harem if you want to. Then, you've also just got to look at the fact that people just have a bit of a stigma because of other series out there that have harem as a major key component of the story. But 100 girlfriends. For me, the harem doesn't matter. It's just a fun part of it. And the interactions between the dragon and the spider and them kind of vying for his attention and affection. And, you know, they've definitely... Makoto straight up does not give a fuck. He, he's kind of mean to Mio and Tomoe at times. He just straight up finds them annoying, dude. It's kind of funny. He indicated that they kind of want to get in bed with him and do some fun activities. The chemistry from those characters I absolutely love. And also the chemistry from other side characters as well. Those that he can direct with from the human side, the beast side, the world itself and how it, it kind of meshes the fog. There's so many amazing things that I really love what the anime has done. And seeing that expand into season two opens up so much potential of where the story can go. Especially and here's the thing, where the story can go. No, the story is just beginning. Because again, season one is literally the prologue. It is the setup. Season two is the actual story. Can you imagine that? Especially with the goddess's influence and the humans and the demons fighting. And then these two other additional heroes being summoned. It's just mind boggling where it can go. And this is the thing. Season 1 was a single core. Season 2 is a double two. core. Clearly, there is a lot of interest in the series. Now, as far as other things go, like merchandise and all that, I'd be very interested to see if that expands more further. But I really, really, really want to see a light novel adaptation done. If there is a fan translation out there, I might give that a read. Definitely tell me in the comments down below if there is one, and I might go hunting for it just to read it. Because... I really want to read the light novels at some point and definitely talk about them in more detail about what I think of the story and each component of the volumes. And I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of Moonlit Fantasy? I think that Moonlit Fantasy started off very generic to me. Again, not because that it is a generic show, but because I've seen other animes such as Reincarnate as a Slime that took inspiration from Moonlit Fantasy to make me think that, oh shit, I've already seen this before, but technically this is the OG. Not gonna lie, it took a couple episodes to get me really invested. Mm, the interactions between Tomoe, Mio, Makoto, and Emma, it's kind of funny at times, but it's like, where is the moment that really gets me invested into this show? I think it was the last arc. It was starting from whenever Fragment of Tomoe died. It's when the humans, the blonde girl, started to do that shit, right? And that was the point where Makoto basically showed his true nature. He was absolutely cold. He just disarmed her, literally. Her arm was sliced off. We tortured her. We fucking killed her because she deserved it. And at that point, the cold ruthlessness of this character combined with the points where there's a couple scenes in this season one where you get to see a little bit of the unhinged side of Makoto because... I, don't, I think a lot of people might perceive this character as like a sweet, nice boy. I don't think so. I think he's a fucking sociopath. I think there's a side to him that's so dark that has been hinted throughout scenes. There are scenes where he's just kind of mad at characters. For example, Alchemy Meister guy, there's this episode where we were kind of like dealing with potions and he almost tripped and he almost like obviously lost the important potion. Very minor scene, but Makoto was actually fucking triggered and he was getting pissed off. And this is one of the single many scenes, and this is one of the multiple scenes where we get to see just a little bit of how pissed off he gets. He's actually quite irrit irritated in a lot of different scenes, but we just kind of play it off like, ha ha ha, who knows, uh, right? But I feel like, again, this is hiding his true side. In season two, episode four, during the teacher exam, he literally kind of said, should I burn this entire place down? As a joke. But was it a joke? I don't know. I feel like this show is fucking trolling us and kind of hinting that, hey, you don't really know this guy. You don't know him. You think that you do, but you don't. And I'm going to throw a little crumbs of his unhinged sides here and there so that later, when he does something fucked up, you're going to be like, oh shit, has it been hinted all this time? 
combine the sociopathic tendencies with how all the different you know story points of the first and second disciples and the demons and all the different perspectives of the battles happening with Makoto coming in that part that ending arc of season one combined with the first like three to four episodes of season two i think really sealed the deal in terms of how much i enjoy skimichi moon fantasy if you don't watch it shame on you man you should watch it man you should really give it a try because i think it's a beautiful show